What is up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build quality computer vision data sets. So as all of you must know, solving any machine learning problem as a first step requires you to have a great quality data set beneath it, right? So, and this is very specifically, uh, very important in the case of building new deep learning neural nets. Solving any computer vision problem kind of requires you to train this deep learning neural net and uh, train it with the right type of data with like uh, a good length uh, and, and a good depth in, in ways like uh, the model can learn uh, different types of scenarios. So then it kind of becomes very critical specifically for computer vision problems to have a very well annotated data set. So yeah, in this video, I'm gonna kind of cover uh, the ways you can kind of work around it and the kind of tools you would need uh, to like build things uh, around if you're kind of interested in this topic. So uh, in my current video, I'm gonna walk you through on how you can go about uh, building your data set from scratch and kind of using it to like build for your use case. If I just type in computer vision on Google, I'll get the definition as is from, which is like one of the top articles from IBM. So the way it happens is live camera feed, a computer vision algorithm easily can detect what's there in the images. You are kind of training uh, this deep learning neural net uh, using a set of annotations, which already kind of looks like this. So one of the best examples uh, out there is the, the open source Coco Common Objects in Context data set. So you can go to the Explore tab and see how uh, the data set looks like. So for example, if I look at a few things, I wanna see traffic light stop sign. And if I search for it, so it's gonna show me the images which are labeled for these attributes. It has all these images, but it's gonna show me like only a few here. So you can see uh, one of the images and see how computer vision is kind of working in a way. So you kind of feed uh, the computer vision deep learning algorithm with these images and annotation uh, and gives in the exact details. And that's where we're gonna come in the Coco format at the end. So Coco format kind of shows you the exact annotation placement uh, in, th in terms of pixels. So yeah, understanding how computer vision works in general and why there is still a need of building good data sets is by looking at specific problems and specific use cases. So one of the use case and one of the problem being solved I looked at was in this article, I'm gonna leave the link in the description. But basically it, one of the problems uh, Airbnb wanted to solve a few years back was to build computer vision algorithms that kind of detects all these amenities within the properties. It's like they have all these images posted by users who are landing their properties and they wanted to see what amenities kind of exist without explicitly asking uh, the users. So what they did, they use all these images to kind of train a model that looks at uh, the specific interior images and see what's there within the, that image. So for example, there's a bookcase, uh, what, there's a kitchenware, which is like an appliance, uh, which is a fridge, there's a table with chairs, there's a, uh, um, different things. So they wanted to do something in detail. So what kind of things that exist, like a refrigerator which ex exists, a microwave oven, a kitchen and a dining room table set, gas stove, oven. So these kind of things they wanted to figure out as amenities and that's why they use like computer vision algorithm to build uh, a model that kind of detects these amenities. It becomes a very useful use case, specifically for a company like Airbnb, where, where they have like millions of uh, property images and using this, they would be able to leverage and categorize these images uh, in a good fashion. And thus at the end of the day, they use and can easily see what kind of exists within the properties. So yeah, it definitely makes up a very specific use case and very useful one. Now that we have seen a few examples in uh, Coco data set, uh, there are many more you can just hop onto and have a look. And if you're interested in uh, just directly using this data set, uh, it's already available for you to use. Um, uh, it's quite easy to get started with it. But yeah, if you're looking for something to build on your own, uh, I'm gonna use another tool for it. Uh, it's like an annotation tool. I'm, I'm gonna be using a tool called Data Torch. So yeah, it's a very good annotation tool uh, where you can just hop onto and kind of work your way through in terms of annotating your data set, specifically for uh, computer vision data sets. So yeah, you, uh, feel free to check out this website. I'm gonna leave a link in the description as well. Once you have the data on board, you can just like try to annotate it uh, easily. Uh, there are other features uh, in terms of uh, building annotation using teams and multiple people can collaborate together. Maybe we can check out uh, that in another video. But yeah, let's try to focus on getting started on in terms of annotation. So on Data Torch, once you kind of sign in or sign up for this, you can e easily use it for free. First thing you're gonna be presented with is a dashboard. Uh, within that, you can create multiple projects. Uh, maybe more on that later. I saw a few other data sets such as the Stanford Dogs, which was very interesting. Uh, maybe I'll use it. I'm just uh, thinking. 
um, which one to use. So uh, this has all these images of different breeds of dogs. Chuhaha. So this is very like interesting. Uh, makes a very good use case for a, for a dog food website maybe <laughs> to just identify what dogs are. But yeah, that's it. Uh, the, so we have all these data set for you to use. Uh, some of them are annotated already. Some of them are not. But in my use case, I'm just going to try to annotate it myself and kind of my build this data set on my way through. The first step you would need to do is kind of download it. So yeah, I downloaded and extracted the data set. Uh, it looks interesting already. So maybe we'll check out a few images uh, just for the sake of it. So yeah, this is uh, one of the images. You can just open up different kind of images of different dogs. So yeah, we'll just start onto it and just hop onto it and start annotating. So the first step would be to create a new project. So maybe I'll just call it dogs here and owner being me. No need for a description for now. I'll keep it public. I, maybe I can share it uh, as a link later. But I'm going to click on create and yep. So my new project has started. There are a few tabs on the left. Maybe I'll go with them one by one. There's a summary. Uh, there's a progress because uh, once you have these images, there's a data set and files and labels. So yeah, the first step would be to upload these files to somewhere. Uh, you can upload these on the default storage which data storage provide. Or you can click on plus and, and connect it to a different type of storage which was which I mentioned. S3, uh, Azure, or Google Cloud. I'm going to use the default one for now. And uh, as a data set, I'm going to create a new one. Uh, I click on create new doc types as a data set name. So, yeah, within this data set, I'm just going to paste, uh, I call it doc types as a path, base path. And I'm within that, because it's just a bucket, I'm going to upload these as is if I can I'll just drop it here it's gonna take some time yeah the idea is to kind of drop the uh, files directly here I'll try with a few first uh, it's just that I'm not sure but the best way to kind of put all these images in a, in a bucket and then disconnect it I think that's the, the faster way to do it but let me drop here a few files and see what happens so yeah I have dropped in uh, yeah all these different types of breeds uh, it's almost 150 file it saves me to upload them I click on upload so and let's just wait meanwhile it happens the files are already here there's one more step which is to create some labels so the labels is the what uh, you are trying to identify within this data set so the first thing I'm going to start with is uh, dogs uh, that's the the first label uh, I'll just leave it as is no parent because this is the first one I'm going to click create. Okay, it created already in the background. And then I'm going to create a few more classes. I uh, namely the, the dog breeds, different types of breeds. Chihuahua. So it comes under dogs. So yeah, in, in a big data set, when there's a lot of hierarchies, something like this is very useful to kind of do the annotation in a way that uh, there's a lot of relation between the classes. And I'm just going to create these for now as is Japanese Spaniel. So I have a few classes. So basically you start with a few, then you can create uh, more later, just creating these labels for now. So we have the data set, we have everything. So we can just go ahead and start annotating. And uh, a few more features maybe, uh, which will be really useful that a full team can kind of work on it because these data sets can become huge later. And uh, if there's a big team that working on it, it makes sense to have like a collaboration feature, which uh, something like data source supports. After you click on one of the images, you will be presented with this annotation layout. So yeah, I'm going to show it by an example here, uh, kind of look like uh, by using a box selection tool. And, and it's very easy to do it. It's just annotating using a box and it's uh, very easy to do comparatively than segmentation. So you just uh, hover over it and highlight uh, which section of the image where you feel there's a chihuahua or you can change the label from here and if there are like multiple images and multiple docs or there's another thing you can do is uh, to build a segmentation data set so you can build two data set one is object detection data set using a bounding box the other is segmentation uh, there are a couple of tools for that for you to use there's a brush tool and uh, where you can just uh, highlight the areas in the images where you uh, think the, the object is so I'll start with here and just like kind of brush it over or where I feel the object is and it's going to provide a segmentation mask. So let me just try to do it quickly here. Yeah, just a bit here. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, you can uh, while building these data sets, you can just fine tune it. Uh, I'm not being super accurate, uh, but there are a lot of tools which can help you kind of being more accurate. But yeah, definitely building segmentation data set takes a lot more time than building a, a regular uh, boundary box uh, selections. And there's one segmentation, and then there's like a segmentation, uh, and you can provide a boundary box over that segmentation just by on highlighting this. So yeah, this is like one, uh, you can get a segmentation as well as uh, an object. So yeah, this is how it looks like. Uh, so once you kind of build all of this data set, you can export it in the Cocoa format. So maybe let's do a few more. Yeah, um, maybe this was a very similar problem I faced uh, a few years back where we kind of wanted to train a very custom model based on some like public data set from Instagram. Something like this tool would be very helpful where we kind of outline the requirements to someone within the team and uh, they can just start annotating. Uh, let's just do like one more to understand a few more things. So yeah, this example is uh, looking good as well. So what we can do, we can either use this tool, uh, the brush tool, uh, which looks much more straightforward for me to do. You can increase the brush width or you can use like, there's another tool called super pixel tool, uh, which uses some AI internally and already divides this image into uh, pixels for you to just like hop onto and select. So you can use this. Uh, I would still prefer this brush tool over anything for now, but yeah, in some cases it would make sense to use it. But uh, since I'm just trying to build a segmentation model, I can just hop on and uh, try to use the brush tool. So I just uh, increase the width size. I think it makes sense when the image is bigger and it helps you kind of easily facilitate. Now I have the segmentation done for this dog as well. Uh, the accuracy is not as good, but yeah, you can kind of force someone else to do it and then uh, ask them to be more accurate with their highlight. This image is completed and then you can kind of go hop back to the data set. After you're done, you will have some summary in a way, but mine would not be as complete, but it's going to show how many annotations I did. Uh, what's the progress in terms of annotating the whole data set, uh, which makes sense when you're doing it with, with a team. You can say how many were labeled, how many were completed because I marked something as complete. There's a summary on how many files, how many annotations, and etc. So the next step is to export this as an exportable format, which is like one of the Cocoa formats I, I explained previously. Uh, I'm gonna uh, go into details uh, once I export this. It's good to look at by example, docs, doc types. And the format I wanna choose is the Cocoa format. It's a standard format to build computer vision data sets. So I cl click on create. And I have this already. The next step is to go hop onto it and run export. And it's gonna give an export as a Cocoa format. So it's queued. I think it's not gonna take much time. So after it has success, you can click on it and click on download. All right, so now that I've annotated some things, I, I was able to export it. But the idea is once you complete everything, then you kind of export it to train your model. There are a few parts on this uh, Cocoa format. I wanted to explain in detail. So let me just hop on and paste it in some more readable JSON viewer. So now I've that, that I've pasted it uh, in a JSON viewer, you can just see it. There are four main components to it. One is the info, and then this categories, uh, images, and annotations. So info is like the basic info. Uh, when, when I create a project from there, and if I provide a description and a URL, it kind of ends up here, gives a year, which is in an integer format, version is a string format, description and URL strings, and then when it was created, uh, the date created is a timestamp. All right, moving on, then the next step is categories. Uh, uh, this is basically uh, are all the labels that we created. There is a category called, uh, the, the, the names of these different breeds, Chihuahua, and there's one category called dogs. Similar with the other ones, Japanese Spaniel, Maltese dogs, and then there's a Pekingese, uh, another breed. So yeah, this is how categories look like. The next is images. Basically, this is like the 150 images I uploaded. The image I'm showing here is the same image, 1073. Um, image of the Chihuahua, it, uh, the width and the height is basically in pixels. So this image has 345 pixel width and height as 500 pixels width, uh, height. The name of the file is the same. The date which was when it was captured is coming from my computer. And uh, a few other details and the path is there. You can easily use this path and kind of com configure your model to just pull these images from the bucket itself. And the last tab is the annotation tab, and this is more, the most important part of this. Basically, I've done two annotations right now, and you can see there are uh, uh, images and then there's IDs. 
the id of this image is like four basically within the annotation is kind of covering uh, the image id as being four so let's just look at this one and this annotation being point out to this exact annotation we did here so there's a data torch id associated uh, the actual id of the annotation basically the annotation id and then there's an image id is the same id of image four uh, and it's just a standard format it's referencing to this id being mentioned here going back so yeah and then there's an image id there's another category id so the category id is like the label id here uh the chua has a category id of one so it's just referencing to that and then there's a bounding box and uh, then there's an area and then there's a segmentation which is interesting so yeah, i'm gonna go by one by one and then there's like one more label called is crowd basically is crowd says there are multiple uh, uh, dogs within the picture like if it's a crowd it's like multiple and that's when then this becomes true right now it doesn't because it's just like one image and one dog uh, within this let's look at the bounding box there are like four parameters within it so then there's like an x coordinate and a y coordinate and we, after that there's like a width and height so yeah when i was doing annotation it kind of uh, drew outside the box so it kind of starts from the left to the right so it's that's why it's like uh, starting from here so yeah, let me just enable it for you to show you can see the bo box being held so it is at minus 11 and uh, x starts from the left axis of the image and the height starts from the the y coordinate starts from the top of the image so hence it's minus 11 something and then 18 uh, basically it uh, comes to the first box so it's kind of referencing this this point and then after you, you get the first two points from first to zero and one and then it the two and three is like the width and the height of the box so then it gives the so it's starting from here the x and y are the first two points and the width and the height so it kind of helps to draw a box via this and then as a next step i wanted to show the segmentation part exactly and what's happening you can see in this images there are different points so it starts from one point and it gives like x and y of this then x and y of the other point then x and y of this point and how many points it created it's kind of presented in a list fashion so the the first is like zero and one is the x so the first one it shows here is most likely maybe this one and then in this one it has x coordinate of 131 131 pixels from the left 18 pixels from the top and the next one is uh, 141 pixels from the left and 20 pixels from the top which should be something like this and then it goes on and on until it kind of completes the full cycle so it's basically listing down all these points and thus providing a segmentation one more thing i wanted to explain if you'll see under segmentation you can see there's a list of lists so basically what happens for each annotation it is actually possible that uh, like probably there was a, a person was in between and there was some hand and then you wanted to show like two different parts of it so maybe i could do something uh, to be more accurate i could uh, remove this stick in his mouth or whatever i could like, segregate this in two different parts and just say oh this is the segmentation of the dog and which is not including the stick uh, in the picture so hence like there can be multiple uh, list of lists the first list is pointing to the first segmentation and then the other segmentation yeah something around that so yeah, I think that's most of it uh, in terms of understanding on how to annotate your stuff. But yeah, uh, someone who's like interested can go about in uh, just using a, a, a tool like this and just try to kind of build your data set from bottom up. You can use a team or you can just build a, a very specific use case and try to solve very complex machine learning problems. And you can just build on like specific use cases and solve uh, complex problems yeah, using much machine learning and computer vision. I think that's it in terms of this video. In this video, we kind of looked at uh, ways of building your custom data set for computer vision models. So yep, I think we just walked through most of it uh, in detail. I hope you guys like this video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and like this video. It really helps with the algorithm. It really helps me to push this video like really forward and kind of raise up my stats and like raise up engagement with different people like you. And uh, if you like this video, definitely share it with your friends or on your social media. Uh, really helps me pro promoting my channel. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching.